All right, let's bring in House Ways and Means Committee member, Republican from Oklahoma, Congressman Kevin Hearn. Hearn. Congressman Hearn is also a Border Security Caucus member. Great to be with you. Thank you. All right, so check this out. Uh, House Republican Conference Chair Elise Stefanik calling for a return to former President Trump's border policies. Stefanik saying, Republicans agree we need to return to President Trump's effective border security policies, which was the most secure border, certainly in my lifetime, and it was working. Uh, is that a fairly obvious statement, I think, uh, a thought held by many at this point? Well, it is, you know, and, and, and thanks for having me again. But having been to the border several times, and I would, I would say that most Americans have been there as many times as Joe Biden has, which is zero times. Uh, the, the reality is, is that President uh, Biden has, has charged Kamala Harris with that job. She did a terrible job. In fact, she never went. Uh, Alejandro Mayorkas, Secretary Mayorkas, has been uh, involved with the border since the Obama administration. So he knows very well what works and what doesn't work. Uh, I had a chance to question him in a border caucus hearing uh, two weeks ago. Uh, I was the first one uh, to reach out and call for his resignation, along with 50 of my colleagues. Uh, because of poor performance of his job. He has all the right answers, but yet he's lying to the American people because he knows, just as Jason showed, he is not going to have a secure border when you remove Title 42. It is the last of the deterrents that President Trump had, and it's only going to get worse. And if you don't believe anything that you see anywhere, just listen to the very Border Patrol agents that guard that border every single day who are capturing some seven to 8,000 a day, saying it's going to go to 18,000 per day. Okay, you've got uh, the president who's a Democrat. Uh, the Dem Democrats are majority in both houses, although barely, obviously, in the Senate. Um, so in the fall, a lot of people feel like Republicans are going to do very well. So if we're talking next January, after Congress becomes Republican, or at least uh, like your committee becomes headed up by a Republican, how does this change the dynamic and what you're able to impose or ask for or enforce in, in how the border is controlled? Well, one of the things you're seeing right now, it's a great question. Uh, obviously, we're not going to control the executive branch, which is right. where the Department of Homeland Security is. But what we won't see happening are these bills that are continuously turned down to only be put on the floor to vote, uh, motions to recommit that the Republicans are putting on the floor. Uh, for good uh, funding for our border patrol agents to help them get the necessary uh, funds that they need, uh, policies that protect our southern border, uh, reinstating policies, funding the wall, and putting all this pressure on Joe Biden to protect Americans once and for all. I'm, I'm not sure why uh, in America we have this disagreement on why we should be fearful of what's happening at the so southern border, why this should be a Republican issue. Democrats should care also. It's a literal invasion on the southern border. Over two and a half million people by the end of this month will have crossed under this president's watch. And they simply, simply do not care about the sovereignty of this nation. And tell otherwise, tell the American people otherwise is simply lying to the American people. And I think that's why you're seeing uh, these favorabilities of Joe Biden and the Democrats erode so quickly in mm -hmm. just a little over 14 months. Yeah. And that's why the Republicans will take back the House this fall. Yeah. Uh, a quick question, quick follow-up question, uh, Representative Hearn. Why don't Democrats care? Like you said, they just don't care. Why do you think that is? Well, I think there's it's a race, race to socialism, and they know that uh, they tried this last year. They tried to push Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema around to get $5.5 trillion of the spending. They couldn't get that done. They know their time and their days are numbered until the end of this year. They're trying to push more socialist agenda, allow as many people in as possible. Hopefully, converting those to voters hmm. uh, in just a few short years so they can take over control of this country once and for all. Uh, the moderate Democrats are going to lose. You're starting to see them really try to figure out how to push back on these agendas. You're seeing things in the House right now that Pelosi's trying to push, and she's not able to do it because uh, moderate Democrats are pushing back because they're concerned about losing their seats as well. So but, now yeah. the Democrats are in the survival of the fittest, and, and that's what you're seeing happen. Okay, let's uh, shift fo focus for uh, a couple minutes we have left. Uh, the unrelenting price of gas, CNBC reporting that the average American household, get this, now spending $5,000 a year on gasoline, that's almost twice as much as last year, which I think it was 2800 and even that was higher than the year before. Um, and also some reports say that some areas of Washington State are actually running out of gas, and the gas stations are adding an extra digit 
to the price uh, anticipating either $10 a gallon or, or we, you know, we're going to have, hundred. it's going to cost $100 to fill up your gas tank at some point down the road. Um, you're from a ga the world where oil comes from, Oklahoma. What are your thoughts when you see this? Well, Oklahoma, it's about 35% of our budget, so very devastating what's going on right now with the gas prices, and we still have some of the lowest gas prices in the nation. But this president has been relentless uh, during his campaign and the first actions of being the president of trying to destroy the fossil fuel industry uh, from every aspect of it, from permitting to, to the leases, uh, tax code, uh, trying to destroy the demand side with uh, funding, uh, giving tax credits for electric vehicles if it's a union-produced union automobile. Uh, his secretary energy laughed when she heard about high gas prices, why that was a thing. I uh, said, if we had everybody had a $60,000 electric vehicle, we wouldn't even be talking about this. This administration does not care about the inflation on the American people. The gas prices are the core of that, and certainly the food prices. Uh, what this president wants to do is, is have dependency on foreign oil again. Uh, mm -hmm. President Trump's policies prevented that from happening. We didn't have any wars. And now here we are with turmoil across the globe. Yeah. Congressman Kevin Hearn, thanks so much.